Welcome back in to the next uh, video in the series in programming in the action language on the Atari 8-bit computer. I'm not even remembering what we're up to now. I think maybe 23. But one thing I know for sure is this is definitely the second video in a series on doing uh, player missile graphics on the 8-bit in action. So... Last time I explained what uh, player missiles were, sprites, and how they're a separate part of memory that goes on the screen, and we uh, redefined the dog. Uh, uh, we took that dog character that we had uh, created using an alternate character set and plotted it to player missile instead. Um, so... This dog here is still the redefined character. It's not a player missile. But this is the redefined character, and this is its player missile uh, uh, equivalent. And remember that this is a uh, player in a single line resolution, where every uh, line of bits or bytes is one scan line on the uh, screen. Uh, there, the default mode is double line resolution where uh, every uh, byte of player missile memory takes up two scan lines, but I wanted to keep this the same as our um, graphics one dog, which was using single scan line. A double line resolution would be like a graphics two uh, dog. So we're gonna start modifying this. Um, normally I'd take a couple weeks to do a video, but in this case I couldn't just define the dog and then not show you how to move the dog around. So tonight we're going to uh, add to this program to actually uh, switch from using the uh, character graphics to the um, uh, player missile dog. So we're going to show how to do that um, uh, so if you remember, I have a, uh, had a routine now, the set characters, uh, redefined certain uh, characters in the character set, but the set up player missile graphics, uh, saved us some memory. Uh, we needed eight pages because it's single line resolution, four pages for double line, um, and we drop Memtop. Remember, the first three pages of player missile memory are unused, so we can give Memtop a little space. Um, this uh, I talked about in the last video. I'm not going to review what all the bits here do. Uh, check that video. This sets the player color, and this sets the vertical and horizontal position to somewhere in the middle of the screen. So it is uh, 92 so it's 92 pixels from the right and 92 scan lines from the top. And uh, just to rehash uh, this part, because it'll come up in a second, is uh, the player has uh, 256 bytes of memory. On each byte is a scan line, so, and there's in a normal play field 192. So 256 minus uh, 192 is 56 plus 8, 64. So there's 64 scan lines that aren't on the screen, 32 to the top and 32 to the bottom. Likewise, this is 160 across, 160 pixels. And it's uh, uh, we can set the horizontal position. Uh, with a byte value from 0 to 255, so it's also limited to 256 this way and 256 this way. Uh, 128 if you're in double line. So 256 each way, this is 160, uh, so minus uh, 256 means that's 96 bytes to either side, 48 on this side, 48 on that side. Okay, hope that made sense. Um, so we're going to change some of our defines, and then I uh, basically zeroed out uh, player address one 
always starts here at uh, four, four pages into player missile memory for player zero. Player one's at five. Player six is at, uh, player two is at six. And player three is at seven. And the missiles actually start here at uh, three. So, uh, and then I uh, move the dog character that we redefined here for the character set. I'm taking that same bike pattern and copying it into player missile memory after I zeroed it out. And I'm starting 92 bytes, uh, 92 scan lines down to put it somewhere in the middle of the screen. And graphics control. This says turn on players only. Uh, zero means turn it off. And three would be um, players and missiles. So what are we doing here? So uh, first thing I'm going to do is remember when we first originally did this uh, check move and we define these min X and max Y's and put them in the defines uh, so that we would not have to uh, type out the actual values because that way as we switch from like graphics zero to graphics, uh, to graphics one to graphics two, all I need to do was change these values. And the same thing here for player missiles. So the minimum Y is there's 32 bytes above here. Remember, it's 64, 32, and 32. So our new minimum Y is going to be hex 20, which is 2 times 16, 32. And our new max Y will be... So the bottom uh, 30, bottom 16 bytes will be F0 to FF, and the next ones will be E0 to EF. Those are our 32 bytes, so the max is going to be E0. And the X, it's 48 and 48, which is 16 more than the 32 and the 32. So we just need to change these to one more here and one less here. And the one other thing I'm going to and uh, the one other thing I'm going to add is I'm going to be using the string. This string here for the start of player zero. I'm going to be using this a lot. So I don't want to have to type it all the time. I'm going to try to put something shorter there and avoid typos. So I'm going to say player missile address player zero. So remember what these defines do. They just take wherever it sees this in your code and substitutes this string. So now I can go down here. And use those instead. We can uh, check that real quick. So it still puts our dog right in the middle of the screen. So we were starting. Uh, we were using X and Y of zero, uh, but now we're going to start it at 7C, so it starts right in the middle of the screen there, and we're not going to be using this anymore. We're not going to be using color and plot to put the dog because we're going to use the player missile, so we can just get rid of these. I am going to comment out this part for now uh, because this will be the next uh, video. We were checking where the dog is to plot the poops on the screen by using locate and plot, but we won't be able to use that method anymore since we 
are using the player missile instead of the uh, character dog. So the character dog, uh, you could find it with locate, but you can't find the player missile with locate. So we're going to use something else there, but that'll be the next uh, thing. Tonight, we just want to show how to move the player missile, and then we'll start showing how to interact with the environment in the next video. So <clears throat> this is our setup, title screen and it's screen, setup player missile graphics. We've changed where it starts now. We've changed the min X and the min Y. This part is still good. So the, again, the nice thing about procedural languages is if you write your procedures well, then um, uh, when you make, even when you make big changes, like switching from using a redefined character to a player missile dog, you don't have to change a lot of code. A lot of the code you used uh, will stay the same. It's just what's inside the, uh, what's inside your functions and procedures will uh, change. That's where you'll have to make changes. But your main program logic it's still going to stay the same. So it's still going to be check stick zero. And if the old X or, or old Y and the current X and current Y have changed in any way, then we're going to move the dog. We don't have to change any of this. Uh, let's just go back here. Oh. So the initial position of the... Uh, we're not going to be using this dog we were using along with color. We're not really going to use that. We're only going to use that in one spot now. And that's in our uh, title screen where we do color dog and uh, plot. <laughs> so this is the only place where we'll still use the redefined character dog for our title screen. We're not going to use the player missile. So... In this case, I don't need to have this uh, dog right here. I can just, I'm just going to change this to uh, which redefined character it is. And remember, uh, these were zero. I'm going to change these to uh, 7C. Again, they get changed during the program execution, but just in case, I, I like to have them here. If I had forgotten to put them in the uh, uh, main loop, I could, uh, <coughs> uh, if I, I, I could rely on them being initialized here to where I want them to be at the start of the program. So uh, now that we've got that taken care of, It's time to get to the meat. So we want to check, is there anything we need to change in check move now that we're using uh, the horizontal and vertical positions? Right now we're still using X and Y. And this is still uh, still good, right? If uh, because I've changed that min y and max y up above, this is still the same thing. If they're pushing the stick uh, up, then I want to change the y to minus. Uh, and if I reach the very top, then I'm going to put it at the bottom of the screen. Same thing here. If I'm pushing down on the screen and it reaches the max, then put it at the top. Otherwise, increment it by one. Same thing here with X's. So the only thing that's different is this. It says if I'm pushing the dog to the left, change the position to dog left. And if I'm pushing the dog to the right, uh, we can't use this anymore because we're not using the color. So we want to change this to the dog pointing left. Uh, if he's pointing right. So notice the first byte of the dog pointing to the right is 8, and the first byte of the 
dog pointing to the left is uh, 16. Since I don't have a, a, a locate or a way to change that, I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to add a pointer to the start of our our player missile shape. So uh, this is a pointer uh, to a place in memory that holds a byte. That byte, this is, so this is a memory address. It's a card value, but it's pointing to a byte value. So you can go back a couple videos where I talk about pointers to see how this works. So we're going to say pm start equals now we haven't we have not uh moved the dog yet so this is how we know where the this is the address of the start of oh, almost made a mistake there this is the start of the address of the player missile, zero. And this is the byte offset from the top currently. That's our Y value, right? So that's where that memory location is of the first byte of the player missile. And then we can say if, if the value there, uh, is not we want the dog pointing left here so if the value isn't left or if the value isn't 16 16 is uh, one zero in hex All right, so what did I do here? So before I could just say, uh, hey, the dog character is now the dog right character. But here I actually have to point the player missile to a new, I have to move in uh, the left dog. Now notice that I put this in an if statement because I don't want to do this move block if, for instance, the dog is already pointing left. I don't want to do the move block again. I just want to um, uh, do it once, only if the dog is pointing to the right. So if this is not 16, which means he's not pointing left or he's some other shape we haven't defined yet, then if he's not pointing left when I push left, then I want to copy in the left-facing dog. So I hope that makes sense. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. Only in this case, I want the dog pointing to the right. And if it's the first bite of the dog uh, uh, in player missile is not an eight, then I know he's not facing right. So I'm gonna change this. And we're actually gonna clean this up in a little bit, but right now that's how we're gonna do it. Just oh, don't have any missed. Spellings. 
And that's all we really need to change here in the check move part. We just need to uh, do that little bit with uh, switching the dog to point left or switching the dog to point right and translate that into player missile stuff. Here's where we have to make a bunch of changes, right? Because this was using locate and uh, uh, character graphics and plots and other stuff. We're going to have to change all this. So we're just going to... We'll get rid of that part. Now, how do we move a dog? How do we move player missiles horizontally? That is like super easy. And that is this memory location right here holds the uh, X value of where the player missile is. And all you have to do is update it with your new position. That's it. <laughs> nope, we don't have to erase it, uh, the old one, and uh, redraw it. Uh, because it just will automatically move that strip of player missile memory to wherever you put this. Uh, we can actually uh, test both this, moving the dog horizontally, and that this left and right thing works. Now, we won't be able to move the dog up and down yet, but we can at least try the other part. Okay, now that dog is moving kind of slow, but he's doing what we want, right? He's moving right and left, he's moving, and he is changing his position, but he's moving kind of slow. Uh, actually, why, why is he moving so slow? Keep in mind what's happening here is when he was a character and I pushed right or left on the screen, he would jump one whole position, character position. In fact, he only had 20 positions that he could be in, from 0 to 20. And every time I moved the dog, he would jump one whole position. So to get him from here to here was only 1 to, you know, 10 moves, basically. But with the player missile, this is... a uh, uh, pixel, one pixel at a time. So as I'm pushing it this way, uh, or right or left, he's moving one pixel at a time, not one character at a time. So for the dog to move the same amount in player missile graphics as it does in character graphics, it has to go through the eight, loop eight times, um, it, it Eight times versus one time, right? To move it eight things. So, so here we were using a delay of 2,500 when we're using the character graphics. But if we divide that by eight, so it's eight times slower, right? So we can reduce this by eight. All right, now, now he's moving at a good pace. May even be going too fast right now, but he's just as fast. And if you think that action, uh, uh, if you want to see how fast action can do this, and again, this is only changing one value. Uh, it's like a poke, so. Uh, Right, that's how fast, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> just one push sends them across the screen maybe 10 times, I don't know. So we definitely need that delay there. So now we've got the horizontal part. Before I show the vertical part, 
I want to clean this up a little bit. This is sort of a complicated code. Before it was one line that said dog equal dog right or dog equal dog left. Uh, this code here is very similar to this code. The only difference is this one checks if it's uh, 16, hex 10. This checks if it's 8. And then if it's 8, uh, it's right. And if it's 16, it's left. So let's make this into a uh, its own procedure. Because this I can use for other things. Right now I'm going to call it swap dog. So whether I'm swapping the dog right or left. And this is going to represent the first byte in our player missile memory. I think uh, this only needs to be... Oh, no. This is an address, so it needs to be a card. That's right. Okay, because this is going to hold the address of the shape. This is going to be the actual value of the first byte of our player missile, and then this will be the shape that we want. And this is the only place I actually need the pointer, so I'm going to... I'm going to move it into a local variable. So in this case, if the first byte in our player missile start is not the first byte then we're expecting, then we want to swap shapes and put in the shape that we're pointing to. So if the, if the first byte isn't this, then I want you to switch to this shape. So same thing we're doing here. So this was 10, and I wanted the dog pointing to the left. This is 8, and I want to point the dog to the right. So this just makes the code a little more readable. If I'm pushing to the left, then swap the dog to the left. And if I'm pushing to the right, swap the dog to the right. And then I can put the uh, details up in here. So let's just check that. Oh, I did not need that. All right, so moving the dog 
horizontally super easy. Moving the dog vertically is a little bit different because that dog occupies uh, eight bytes in the uh, strip of player missile memory. And when I push up on the stick, I want to take those eight bytes and move them all up one byte in memory. Now you could do that with the for loop. Uh, that's how they do it in most basic programs. Uh, but I'm going to show you... Uh, I'm going to take advantage of what we did here with the zero and the move block. And there's a couple different ways. I may show a different way in the next video, but this is just uh, one way to do it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dog. Uh, from where it is right now. I'm going to take the dog from where it is right now, and I want to move, copy it into someplace safe. That way I don't have to worry if the dog is pointing left or right. I'm just going to copy whatever picture's in the dog to someplace safe. Where is that someplace safe? There's a couple places you could put it. Uh, but for instance, I did specifically did not turn on missiles here. I only turned on players. And I only turned on players here with this uh, shadow direct memory access control location. I did not turn on missiles here. So I have that nice little spot where I have one page of memory between where Memtop is and where the start of player zero is. That's where the missiles live, but since I don't have them turned on, it's a kind of a free 256 bytes. If I did turn on missiles, then what I would do is change this to 200 and then use uh, 200 to 300 as my safe place to copy the current dog image. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say copy to where the missiles are and what I want you to copy is the uh, current position of the dog and I want you to copy those eight bytes so copy that into uh, the player or to the missile memory I'm going to zero out that same block. Where the dog is right now. Then I'm going to copy the dog back from... Uh, where I just stuck it, and the destination is going to be uh, this plus current Y. So current Y is going to be either V position minus 1 or V position plus 1. I'm going to copy it from the missile memory and then zero out the missile memory All right, again, what I'm doing is I'm copying the dog from where it is now into the unused place where I have the uh, player missile memory. I'm zeroing out where the dog is now. I'm writing the dog into player uh, the player at player zero address plus whatever the new current Y is 
from where I stored it in the missile, and then I'm zeroing this out. And then the last thing I need to do is update. So the next time when I come around and I copy this, this will have the uh, right current value there. Now you may say, okay, in action you're doing a lot of uh, moving the memory around. How slow is that going to be? Let's check it out. First, actually, I did not do this, so let's do this. Just in case. Because whenever you're moving blocks of memory around, always good to save in case you make a mistake. So now I can move the dog around. vertically and horizontally and uh, if you think uh, that this couldn't be that fast to move this uh, in action without using assembly language uh, just watch when I remove the delay entirely <laughs> right so it's it's just as fast now, one thing I noticed uh, when I was playing around with this, you know, this like where the dog, uh, it seems to have a buffer, right, of like some lines at the top and then some lines on the side. So even though like the, uh, uh, Even though the Atari uh, manual I was using, which was uh, Dayray Atari, right, says to use the, oh, and I don't need these anymore, uh, although it says to use uh, like 48 and uh, uh, 208. The, the dog doesn't go all the way. So I actually uh, kind of changed, changed these by yet another. And I actually increased uh, these. Which doesn't make sense by what De Ray Atari says. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. But uh, I'm actually going to comment this out just so you can see it a little better on where it goes to the edge of the screen. See, now he seems to go all the way to the edge. Still, yeah. Uh, still looks like there's a buffer at the bottom, so... Uh, of course, uh, now that I think of it, uh, this is full um, screen. That's why it's not. The, there's more than 192 scan lines here. That's why it's doing it that way, right? There's no bottom bar here, like when I'm in edit mode. So you may have to play around with these uh, values for min x and min y to get it to actually go all the way, but these aren't bad values to use, uh, as you can see, and it certainly still works. So, let's try to summarize as I make a 40-minute video. Sorry, <laughs> I'm doing this. I didn't have to change uh, my main logic at all, except commented this out uh, for now. I For setup, the only thing I needed to change was... Uh, the starting position to reflect the new starting positions. Uh, I left the uh, colored dog here for the one plot on the um, 
because it was easier to use than using the player missile there. Uh, we didn't change this at all. Uh, and the only, uh, the only, uh, we updated uh, the min X and the min Y, max X and max Y, and we added this to make things a little bit easier. The only thing we uh, changed in this check move was the lines about whether the dog is pointing to the left or pointing to the right, and we made a new procedure that uh, checks the first bite in the dog, and if I'm pushing it to the right and that first bite isn't an eight, then I want to make it a uh, dog right. And if I'm pushing it to the left and the first bite isn't uh, 16, then I want to push uh, dog left. So that's what the swap dog does. It says uh, find the first bite at the current uh, player missile uh, memory for the dog and then if it's not the one that we expect for that position then uh change the shape to the shape we want and again we have this if statement there because we don't want to do this move block unnecessarily if it's already pointing left then i don't want to do this so and then the last thing we did was we changed the move dog we had to because it's take it's doing eight times as much work this way and this way, instead of when I was moving it character by character, we had to divide our delay by eight. And uh, to move the dog horizontally, super easy, just change it to the current X position. To move it vertically, we save the dog shape off into a safe place in memory, zero out where the dog is, write the dog into the new position, copying it back and then zero out where our safe space and then update the vertical position to our new current Y. That is that is how we get to here with our dog moving all over the screen and he is a fully animated player missile with eight times the resolution in his movement than he had as a character. So much finer resolution. Next video, we'll talk about doing a, a collision detection where the player missile can interact with the things on the screen. That's how we'll be able to have the dog start uh, pooping again. So uh, thanks for watching. Sorry for the length of the video. Talk to you later. Bye.